So, you've chosen to serve Rosaria after all. She will be pleased with me for finding her another finger. <laughs> but be warned, my friend. Rosaria's fingers need only fetch tongues for their mistress. Otherwise, we are free, unchained. Like Yellowfinger, you can choose to believe that all fingers share camaraderie. But do not force your romance upon the rest of us. Hey there, and I hope you're well. I'm Jake the Ashen Hollow, and in this video we'll be talking about Rosaria's fingers. But not like her fingers fingers, it's not a fetish, but it was the moniker for those who served the goddess of rebirth. But first, if you enjoy Souls games and their lore, be sure to click on the subscribe button, as well as the bell icon for channel notifications. Consider clicking the join button to support the channel even further for some cool perks, and follow me on Twitter for reasons. We meet three of Rosaria's fingers in-game. Well, let's not call it meet, we encounter three of them. But who are they, and maybe more curious, who were they? That is the focal point of Rosaria's powers, Rebirth, turning you into someone else. Rosaria herself is certainly an interesting enigma. Her subjects offer her the tongues of their victims. Because I suppose collecting the tongues of others is comforting to you if you don't have one yourself? I don't know. But I have long speculated that she was formerly Guinevere, the goddess of bounty and fertility, as well as used her fingers to form the king's black hand. But I go into way more depth about that in my Lothric Civil War video, which I'll link in the description. So let's start with the most basic of Rosaria's fingers, and that's Longfinger Kirk. His armor reads, Armor of Kirk, the notorious Knight of Thorns. A dense patch of thorns grows from its surface, a fitting item for the murderous Kirk, for even the simple act of rolling can damage enemies when wearing this attire. Which is almost verbatim to his armor description in Dark Souls 1. And to be honest, I don't think there's anything particularly special about this guy, as it's likely the same notorious dude from way back when he was serving the fair lady. Or I suppose it could be somebody who found his armor and was rebirthed as Kirk, but I don't think the distinction is all that important, because we really don't get anything else that looks further into who Kirk was. It seems he was just a sweaty, murderous simp. Next is Yellowfinger Hazel. Which finger is considered the yellow one? I have no idea. Just use your imagination. It's incredibly obvious the connection Hazel has with Ulysil before even reading descriptions, but we'll read the one for her crown nonetheless. It states, Crown made an imitation of a divine creature of Ulysseal, land of ancient golden sorceries. Xanthus clothing is the mark of a researcher of lost sorceries, and the oversized crown is emblematic of their work. Such a curious pursuit is surely nothing to be ashamed of. Of course, the crown being the imitation of the mushrooms of Ulysseal, and I would assume namely Elizabeth, as she seems to be the closest to Dusk, who was the princess of Ulysseal. So if Mushrooms had a leader, Elizabeth probably fit the bill for that, and the one of whom the Xanthus crown imitates. Now, I've always thought that Farron's Legion, or at the very least the idea behind it, began in Ulysseal. They were the first land to fall to the Abyss, and really the only named land that we know of. Sure, there is New Londo, but they willingly embraced it. So Farron's Legion originating in and or from Ulysseal makes a lot of sense. So it's interesting that Hazel is the daughter of the leader of the Legion's Acolytes. The Farron Hail Sorcery reads, Entrusted to the leader of the Legion's Acolytes and apparently a sorcery of his daughter Hazel that was refined by a crystal sage. Originally, it made me ponder on the idea of what if Hazel is just Dusk Rebirth? We knew Dusk as the Princess of Ulysseal. She taught us her golden sorceries that were never offensive spells, but more peaceful in nature. Perhaps the idea behind the morality of Ulysseal's spells changed after Manus ravaged their home, and it wouldn't be so fitting for a princess to be so aggressive with her sorceries. It's also interesting to consider that her pickaxe weapon is also the catalyst for her spells, which isn't often the case. Another example of this would be Manus's Catalyst, both a weapon and a spell medium. And Dusk did spend a fair amount of time with Manus after he kidnapped her. Not to mention you learn the proper bow gesture from both Dusk and Hazel, and Hazel invades you in the area where you find Dusk's antiquated set. But of course, that could all be circumstantial. Perhaps Hazel could be a descendant of Dusk, or maybe just a huge fan. 
I also pondered the idea that perhaps Hazel is Elizabeth after a rebirth, but only because the idea made me giggle. A giant mushroom walking into Rosaria's chambers like, I don't want to be a mushroom no mo. But who knows? Maybe that could be a possibility. The man grubs, Rosaria's servants who underwent too many rebirths, certainly aren't human anymore. So perhaps it could be possible for her to turn a mushroom into a person. The last named finger we encounter is ring-fingered Leonard. His garb reads, Leonard was born into royalty, which is believed to be the reason for his skill in both sorcery and swordsmanship. Indeed, the dingy garb is in fact embroidered with gold thread, betraying its purpose as military wear designed for a noble. Leonard is incredibly interesting indeed. He's often speculated to be the firstborn of Rosaria, the one who took her tongue. But I guess the term firstborn in relation to the goddess of rebirth could be subjective. Is it the firstborn of Guinevere or the first one to be rebirthed by her once she became Rosaria, the goddess of rebirth? Or what if he's the last born of Guinevere? I think either of those actually make a lot of sense. We already know he's royalty. Now let's read the description for his silver mask. It says, In his youth, Leonard suffered grave burns to his entire body. His face in particular, which he hid beneath his mask, was terribly scalded. He abstained from restoring these injuries even after becoming a finger of Rosaria. Royalty with grave burns all over his body. That literally only makes me think of the Lothric bloodline, who had consistently experimented on their children, always attempting to create the perfect heir to the flame by any means necessary. That's pretty specific. Leonard's weapon of choice also ties him to the Lothric royal family, as his crescent moon sword is imbued with the power of the moon. And on top of that, he inherited this weapon. Which is of course interesting because the king of Lothric was infatuated with his studies of moonlight and the power of the moon, associated of course with Seath the Pale Drake. Could Leonard have been Ocelot, the last born of the Queen of Lothric? He does use the Obscuring Ring, which is similar to the Dragon Crossbreed's powers to go invisible. Is that the reason we don't find baby Ocelot in the fight with Osiris? Maybe. I think that there's just as much stock in the idea of him being the firstborn as well though. But to me, it seems obvious that the royalty he was a part of was in Lothric. The rest is up for you to decide. But those are the three fingers we encounter. But naturally, three fingers don't make a hand. Perhaps the player character was meant to fill in the title of the fourth finger. But then you have the conundrum of, is a thumb a finger? Because if not, then all fingers would then be accounted for. But alas, that is just the ever-churning mystery of Dark Souls leaving us with more questions and an unending hunger for answers. But that's also the beauty in it. It paints a puzzle and leaves us to fill in the gaps with our own imagery and imagination.